I drove all across Mexico for four years, but I've been carless for a year. So to say I'm extremely excited to start the process of buying a car is an understatement. And here to help me is my friend Juan Diego, who's doing me a huge favor by, you know, helping fill in the blanks where my Spanish just isn't sufficient or kind of asking the important questions and making sure I don't make a huge mistake in some form or another. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Wendy. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Alrighty, we're gonna start off today at Toyota where I have a couple picked out that I really wanna see, the RAV4 Hybrid and the Toyota Corolla Cross because of gas mileage and all the different specs. So fingers crossed I get to see them given the shortages, I know there's gonna be some challenges. Okay, so first I'm gonna be looking at the RAV4. They said they don't have a RAV4 Hybrid at the moment, but this is basically the same, just like different engine. You gotta pump the brakes. I got a little too excited about sitting inside this puppy, so I didn't show the deets. This one is called the RAV4 Adventure. In terms of bells and whistles, it's in between the basic model and the limited. It goes for 644,000 pesos and gets an average of 16 and a half kilometers per liter. There is a lot about this version that make it a luxury ride, including various driving modes, a large digital screen, every button you'd ever need at your fingertips on the steering wheel, a big center console with two USB ports, and contactless phone charging, which is pretty freaking sweet if you ask me, an eight-way power adjustable driver's seat, among many other features. It also comes with what's called Softex fabric, which is a soft and resistant synthetic leather. Very spacious here in the back. Well, I'm short, I'm 5'3", but like tons of room. Oh, there's a cup holder in the middle. Well, so even, okay, this seat is much farther pushed back and there's still a decent amount of space. Let's hop out the other side here and I think Somehow, oh, there you go. It's a three, four, no, two, what do you call it? Two thirds split, so two, two sides of the seat goes down. And this back is huge. The back trunk area, and it's got a cover. Okay. Let's go sit in the driver's seat. He brought the keys out so I could steal it. I'm just kidding. This is all digital it looks like that's unexpected nice big screen i mean it is very comfortable like the seats feel super comfortable even though the headrest is a little bit forward for me if i had a ponytail it'd be like <laughs> and then like yeah you could easily fit like like two big size bodies back here they were, they were my size maybe like six with the seats down for sure and this how does this work oh that's cool with my Prius C3, it also had a cover, but it was a hard top cover. This is really nice because you can still have it and keep it in here and it can cover stuff, but you don't have this big bulky thing. The big problem that I was just told, the two cars that I was most interested in in Toyota were the RAV4 Hybrid and the Corolla Cross, and they have neither. And he said it's an indeterminate wait time for when you could get it and you have to put a deposit down. I don't know, did he say if the deposit was uh, yeah. returnable? Like if you don't like the car? No, once you place the order, that's stupid. <laughs> because what if you don't like it? I don't know if I've never seen it, then how do I know if I like it? Did he say how much it was? No, not yet. Oh boy. What are we gonna do? Este bueno, ahorita, 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 en este momento no lo tengo, ¿no? Aquí les haría la invitación a que en cuanto llegue una de las unidades que ya están vendidas, avisarles, Juan Diego, vénganse a verlo para que ustedes lo conozcan ya. Ok. So you can be 100% sure because... Ajá, y ya, y ya tomas la decisión, ¿no? Ok, ok. Justo, justo esa de ella es limited gasolina, no es híbrida, mm -hmm. pero es prácticamente la misma. Si quieren, vamos a vamos ver okay, para, que, para que la conozcas. Okay. One thing I have to share really quick, though. Like, this is so cool. I've never had a car where you just touch it and it goes. I don't even have to lift a single finger. Well, I did. I had to lift one single finger. I don't have to use a single muscle is what I was trying to say. And then to open it, you just touch under there. Oh, ah, it's so cool. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, vean esto. Esta es la versión limited. ¿No? Si se fijan, trae, trae detalles más, más de lujo. ¿Qué te cambia también en la, en la versión de ¿Son más, más grandes? Más, titanio, ¿no? ¿Más grandes o...? No, que era el color. Es más ah, grande, okay. El color era un gris oscuro y esto ah, es como, okay, okay. Es como aluminio, color al tono sí. aluminio mm -hmm. totalmente. Como inoxidable. Manijas cromadas, parte del, del frente, que es la parrilla, contaminados más finos. Qué bonito esto. Y en el interior es donde ya vamos a ver. Okay. Once again, this is the RAV4, not hybrid, but this is the limited version. 
electric seats here. All of this is digital, huge screen. I think this almost seems like it's bigger than the other one. Again, contactless, phone charging, cup holders. Oh, this even has like a thingy here. You can charge your phones in there as well. I do feel like, I don't know if this goes up more maybe. I feel like I'm sitting really low in the car. Like I can't tell where the front of the car is, which some some cars the like the whole seat will like lift up a little bit more. So gracias. Okay, and this is again push to start. Well, first you have to press the brake. There we go. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the car itself feels very luxury, very nice. So the inside here is the same on both the sport and this version. Uh, the fabric is different. I think this is some type of leather. In this version, is that the apertura is por medio de Ya, ya me hizo quedar mal. Estoy bailando un poquito. <risa> corta, le corta, le corta. A veces tienes. Ah, sí. Es muy temprano, tienes. Ah, necesita café. Si sí, es por medio de sensor de patada. No es que sea rápida la patada. Vamos a ver, vamos a tratarla mal. Ah, ahí está, ¿ves? Era hacerlo rápido, es amor apache. Lento soy yo, lo mío soy yo. Well, that's a, that's a cool feature if it works. I mean, okay, so I do like the looks of this one. Give you a little, like, 360. It looks very sleek and sexy. I like the red too, not usually a red car for some it's more like a cherry red. So we're now here in the basement to see a Corolla Cross. It's gonna be a little dark on these clips, sorry about that. But I did really want to see this one. It seems it's lower, lower to the ground, which I kind of like because even though on the other ones you could adjust the seat. Oh, so this doesn't really have all the bells and whistles, it's not electric. You, like... <laughs> scoot it forward like this, um, but it does have the big screen here a lot less going on I mean charge your phone here overall. It just feels a lot smaller But I actually do like that. It's the analog. I think you would call this not digital meters here like speed meter and everything speed meter speedometer <laughs> Like the other ones this one also has a sunroof. But yeah fewer bells and whistles although much cheaper like half the price or or thereabouts and then in the back here, instead of being leather, are fabric seats, which I honestly don't mind. I think leather gets pretty hot, especially like, you know, in the summertime you sit, if you're wearing shorts, you burn your booty off. Got air vents here. And even with this other seat scooted way back, again, there's still a pretty good amount of room. It does overall feel like you can tell it's not the luxury option. This is the, the cheaper option. The seats do lay down, the back looks pretty spacious. Again, I could fit a bunch of dead bodies if I wanted to. So don't cross me in 2023, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, let's ask some questions here. Entonces, el cross tiene más opciones, más, más <laughs> versiones. Sí. Correcto, va a llegar otra versión que es la XLE. No la conocemos todavía, no nos ha llegado, pero sí sé que viene con vestiduras en piel, okay. asiento eléctrico, okay. y va a llegar con otros detalles de lujo, me uh -huh. imagino, ¿no? Y viene la versión híbrida. Uh -huh que creo que va a estar posicionada también en la XL. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that subscribe button. I try to post a new video every single week. Now it is time for dealership number two, Subaru. Gracias. Ran into the exact same problem here as the last dealership, so I'm looking at the Subaru XV, and they won't have any until March, but apparently it does have a 2022, so of course I'm gonna take a look. First appearances, it looks just as luxury as the Toyotas. Pretty similar bells and whistles, everything you have on the steering wheel. Um, a moonroof. Also very comfortable to sit in. I like how I can see over the front of the car better. Obviously it's a little bit lower. Mm. Let's see what the back looks like as far as space. So if the seat is scooted forward, it seems like there's quite a bit of room. If it's scooted back, barely my little legs would fit in there. Um, I do believe these seats both lean forward. And here we have 
cup holders, which I love that feature. So this is really tall. What's in here? Okay, so the seats do go down, although I'm really surprised how tall this is. Like there's not a lot of room between here and the ceiling. So of course, because this is all wheel drive, the gas mileage is significantly lower at about 13 kilometers per liter, which I don't super love. But I do love the size. It's a snazzy looking vehicle and it seems though that people are kind of split. I asked on Facebook, what do people think about Subaru, specifically the Subaru XV, or I think it's called Crosstrek in the US. And some people said it's amazing, the car lasts forever. Other people said stuff breaks down and it's really expensive to fix. So I do love the look of that car and it did seem like relatively luxury and like I said, with comparable features to the Toyotas, but with the wait time, uh, that's just to March is when they're gonna start getting the 2023s and that's all they have available you're on the wait list for that so it's like I don't even know what it would really look like at that point point. and with the gas mileage being so much lower kind of feel like I gotta rule Subarus out at this point so now I'm here at the Kia dealership Kia is by far the most widely debated in the comments of the Facebook post I did. Some people say they love their Kias, other people say it's junk and don't buy it and you couldn't pay them to take the car. I'm gonna see for myself, maybe this will be the first car that I get to test drive if they have it. <laughs> so far I don't see, I'm looking at the Rio hatchback and the Niro, which is their hybrid. So, okay, this is the Kia Rio, not the hatchback version, but um, in the, I'm sitting in the back now. If the seat is all the way back for somebody like me, I have barely just a little bit of extra room for the seat that's a little bit farther forward. I have about this much room. I can get what some people were saying though about Kia's not feeling super nice and especially from going, especially going from Toyota to Subaru to Kia, this is definitely the lowest end. Like you can just kind of feel like the quality of how hollow the doors are. It does have some bells and whistles, of course, like the steering wheel has a lot of um, buttons and everything. I feel like Kias have gotten a lot better than when I've last sat in one, but it feels, it does feel like a cheap car. It is the cheapest of all of them. I think I was looking at um, the Kia Rio hatchback is about 20,000 US dollars. Um, unfortunately, they don't have any until March. No tienen uh, más de 2023 uh, hasta el mar marzo? Uh, solo tenemos 2023. Do años anteriores no tenemos... Uh, 23, sí, pero hasta el marzo? O cuando... Ah, ¿la Niro? Um, Niro o, o Rio Hatchback? El Rio sí, sí nos llega rápido. Oh, tarda okay. un mes en llegar si lo pides. Ah, okay. Pero la Niro tarda tres meses. Tres meses, uh -huh. ok. Muy bien. So yeah, this... Um, the seat, honestly, it's pretty comfortable, good position for me to sit in. Um, the seat adjusts, but this one, in this one, it's not electric. I think they have other versions that are a little bit nicer. She did say the Niro, um, which is the hybrid, what did she just say, three months to wait on that one, and it comes with all the bells and whistles. Like, there's only one version, which is something I liked about it. But overall, it's gonna be really hard for me to settle in a Kia with the other, with the Toyotas looming in front of my face, dangling the, the best option, the, the option that I prefer. I am at heart a Toyota gal. <laughs> I was told that the version I was looking at is the very most basic and she's going to get keys for this one. So it has bigger wheels and I'm not exactly sure what the differences are. Ugh, every single smoke detector in this place needs new batteries. Leather seats and a little bit higher of a price tag at 355, 900 pesos, but honestly, I'm just kind of not feeling Kia. Also, it's so frustrating that there's no, basically nothing to look at. Even Juan Diego was asking like, is there a nicer version with the more bells and whistles in any model? And it's like, well, this is basically what we have. Take it or leave it. It's like, I think I want to leave it. <laughs> all right, so this one's got all the features minus the sunroof, which she said for the Rio hatchback, it would have that. So here, this is what the steering wheel looks like with all of the buttons that you need for volume and answering calls, swerve assist, I think. Lights. I like how this is analog, not digital. That's one thing I really did not like on the RAV4, to be honest. But I like also that this is fixed. It only has one USB port. Uh, very basic, small cup holders, small armrest center console thing. The space in the back, though, like, this is a small, this is a very compact car. I don't know. 
It also seems kind of risky to me because even though Kia has on the Rio hatchback, it's 150,000 kilometer five year warranty, and on the Niro, it's 100,000 kilometer five year warranty, which is a great warranty, but I was told it doesn't really cover all the things that might break. And with a warranty that big, it's almost like they're telling you that there might be stuff that goes wrong with the car, which does not inspire a lot of confidence on my part. For the Niro, I would have to put down a 5,000 peso deposit, which I believe that was the same at Toyota, right? 5,000 pesos deposit, which I wouldn't get back. So she said she would let me know when one comes in so I could look at it and, you know, feel it out or whatever. And I did receive a couple comments on that Facebook post I was talking about with people saying they really, really liked their Niro. So I'm gonna still give Kia a little bit of a chance, but like I said, I'm feeling the, <laughs> feeling Toyota a little bit more. What I'm most certainly not feeling are the wait times for these cars. I knew to expect that, but what a drag. All right, deja vu, back at the Toyota dealership that was the first stop because I didn't realize they had semi-nuevos or almost new, like new cars. And I'm okay with, uh, with that as an option given the circumstances of how long the waits are and stuff. And it's kind of like a certified pre-owned situation, I imagine. Hopefully comes with a warranty. I'll have to ask about that but they do have a RAV4, not sure if it's a hybrid, we're gonna see. Okay, so now I'm looking at a 2021 RAV4 X, XLE. This has fabric seats. Um, oh, first off, it's 10,000 kilometers, so it hardly was driven at all. Fabric seats though, nice center console, everything on the steering wheel that I would expect. I love with, um, oh, contactless charging, wireless charging. I love with Toyotas that there's space like in between and everywhere to put stuff even here, like I drop the key in there. Um, got the Kema Cocos or sunroof. Similar thing in the back with the cup holder and looks like lots of space. Not a huge fan when cars have this where like it's gray so it gets dirty much easier but at least the middle of the seat is not like that. I don't know if it's because I'm at an incline but I do feel like I can see over the hood better than I did in the other one. It's like I'm sitting up higher and I'm probably a total weirdo for this but I do really like the analog on this older one. Of course, you know, I like the digital screen and all that but there's just something about seeing it on a dial like a, a real physically there dial that I like a lot more love the push to start I will never ever ever again in my life get a car that doesn't have keyless start and stop of the engine same with the contactless like handle you touch the handle you don't need to take your keys out to lock and unlock it let's see about the price though 600,000 pesos from, from what I looked at online that's more expensive than buying a new one so Juan Diego is asking now let's get the inside information according to Juan Diego she kind of fumbled over her words in explaining why this was 600,000 pesos when a new one is like 580 something thousand pesos and it's because you're paying for the luxury of getting it right now not putting yourself on a waiting list not waiting months for them to be built but literally you would save money buying a new one this is so bonkers to me on principle I cannot pay more for a used car I just I can't I can't <laughs> I said I would not buy that used one on principle, but that was before she told me that there's a three-year warranty that includes maintenance, which makes it very appealing. However, this brand new 2023 RAV4 is approximately 100,000 pesos more. I would have to wait an indeterminate amount of time for it, like three months maybe, could be six, eight months, I don't know. Um, but it's just like, for just a couple thousand dollars more, I could get something brand new. So now we drove across the city to another Toyota dealership. Same situation as before, there's waiting lists, it could take a few months, it could take six months. So I pretty much had to rule out the Toyota Corolla Cross because that could be six to, well, she said maybe three months to six months. I really don't want to wait that long, especially for a car that I've never seen, never test driven. That's a common theme of today, by the way. Never, haven't been able to test drive a, drive a single one. But um, I'm looking again. They do have this um, RAV4, what is it called? Adventure, Advent, ad, Adventure, <laughs> and man, I like this one. It's got the like kind of orangish trim, super comfortable to sit in, and it has like all the cool bells and whistles. If I got something like this, uh, which the hybrid also, um, the RAV4 hybrid, it would be the biggest car I've ever owned. 
something to consider. Juan Diego and I decided to go to lunch and I was thinking I'm gonna put some food in my stomach and think long and hard about whether I wanted the 2021 used RAV4 because even though it's more expensive than the new ones, I could get it within a few days. But the universe decided that that car is not for me because somebody put a deposit down, which means they have the right to buy it for the next five days or they lose their deposit. So anyway, we're back here though at the original Toyota dealership where I've decided on not a hybrid for the reason that it takes longer for it to be delivered and I was doing the math on this. Assuming I drove 100,000 kilometers per year and gas cost 20 pesos per liter, it would be only a 3,321 peso difference in gas between the hybrid and the RAV4, not hybrid, and it would take approximately 30 years to make up the savings on the price difference between the regular RAV4 and the hybrid. So. I'm sorry to the planet and anybody else that cares, <laughs> but I don't wanna wait that long and wait who knows what it would be, six months or whatever. So I'm gonna go with one of the RAV4s. The problem is I can't decide <laughs> between this one behind me, the adventure version, which has like sports mode and I really love the inside. And then the one that we have over here, limited, which has more luxury options. It's about a 50,000 peso difference. This one has a shorter waiting list, but they said I could actually put down a five 5,000 peso deposit and basically decide when it becomes my turn which one I want depending on which colors are available so I have so many decisions this is so hard and so stressful okay so I just did a really crazy thing without having the car without knowing the color or even which of these two models I will be getting or when the heck I'm getting it between now and the end of 2023 I put down a 5,000 peso deposit I do want to give a big shout out to Jorge here for helping helping out through this whole process, answering all the questions, and being extremely patient. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias a ti. Muchas felicidades. Congratulations. Gracias. So if, you, if anybody's coming to Dalton Toyota in Guadalajara, ask for Jorge. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns, I would love to hear them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Of course, if there's something that I didn't even think of or consider, if you have some advice for me, please, please, please let me know. I hope you will subscribe to my channel to see more videos. I will do another one coming up once I actually complete the purchase of buying this car and on the screen here is another video I did recently in Ajijic a day in my life in Mexico if you want to continue watching and one more thing before you go yeah. <laughs> perfect <laughs> gong that bell so you get notified the next time I release a new video and I hope to see you there